So friends, till now we are discussing bonds which did not have any complexities. That is, they were plain vanilla bonds. Right? They were having a fixed maturity, they were having coupons at fixed times and nothing else was there. Now what happens if this plain vanilla bond gets added with a embedded option? So there is a bond which looks like a plain vanilla bond but there is an embedded option within it, say a call option or a put option. In that case friends, the cash flows become uncertain because whether the bond will be called back or whether it will be sold, we do not know. So cash flows become uncertain. So yield to maturity does not influence anymore as much, does not have as much influence. And because yield to maturity does not have as much influence, we cannot decide the duration from modified duration or Macaulay duration. So their relevance is no more there. So what do we do? We try to understand what influences calls and puts most. It is the market interest rates, right? Or the benchmark rates. The benchmark rates or the market rates. Say if a bond is uh, having a put option, that is the seller can sell it if that seller finds it convenient to sell. So at the time of buying the bond, the market rate was 7%, the market rate, right? After buying it, the rates became 9%. So this will decide whether the selling will happen or not. Obviously the buyer would prefer to sell at this rate. Obviously the buyer would prefer to sell this bond and buy a new bond at this rate. So sell, buy, right? So in this case, the duration of this bond which has an embedded option gets calculated by something called the effective duration. Okay. Now let us see how it is calculated. Effective duration is equal to present value when the benchmark yield goes down minus present value when the benchmark yield goes up divided by 2 times change in the curve, not the yield to maturity, I am talking about the benchmark rates, change in the benchmark rate. This is the change in the curve we call it, multiplied by when there is the present value of the bond when there is no change. So this is the calculation of effective duration friends. Let us say the curve, the curve rate currently is 10 percent. One of the bonds, a complex bond, is having a coupon, an annual coupon of 8 percent. It has a maturity of 3 years and the coupon payment is annualized. The future value is at par which is 100 and this is 8 percent of par, right? Therefore, we can easily calculate the present value of this, my friend, PV0. This comes to PV0 is 95.0262 or approximately 0263. Similarly, let us say there is a scenario 1. Scenario 1 where the curve increases. The curve increases to 11%. In this case, the PV becomes 92.6688, 92.6688, right? This is the scenario 1. In a scenario 2, the curve goes down to 9%. 9% 
in this case the change is the present value is 97.4687 right now we are ready to calculate the effective duration so effective duration is equal to 97.4687 minus 92.6688 divided by 2 into change in the curve is 1% on either side right so it is 0 0.01 multiplied by the current price that is 95.0263 we can easily calculate this friends this is coming at 2.5255 five, five. 